Hey guys, today we're diving into three Rashid features that you probably didn't know about. And the first feature is supportive objects for refraction. Those glasses I actually did in ZBrush and put them into Cinema 4D. And I'm gonna explain what's going on right here. As you guys see, this is the lightest project that I did and I turned off completely every cloner that existed. So let me show you as it was. A huge mess, right? But don't worry, I'm gonna explain step by step. So let me turn off every cube that exists. And let's say I'm going to turn on this. Nice. We're dealing with this huge mess. But I'm gonna open material. And this ramp actually goes from preset. If I load preset, you kind of see sky 3. I'm gonna pick this. I deleted black color completely. Hit right click, distribute nuts, and we're good to go. So invert this, kind of like this, but I'm gonna control Z in order to not mess around, right? We're not messing around here. You can see that uh, that loses smoothness, right? So to soothe this, nice, I'm playing in words so great for not native speaker, right? So interpolation, we're gonna change interpolation into blend, it gives us this uh, kind of to get rid of smoothness. So let me actually change this interpolation into smooth and show you guys uh, how smooth inter interpolation looks like. Nice and smooth. I like this to get rid of cube from uh, our render view, what I did, I added this cloner. This is kind of our dad that it not only contribute, there's the children, there's the father, every family just gather up. That is gathering every cube here. And I put retrieved object here, right? And you see, this is slight little thing. Primary ray visible. I'm gonna turn off and Voila, we see this cube nice and ramped. <laughs> I'm gonna turn off the back again. And let me actually invert this in order to just not only grasp, but understand nice and solid. I'm gonna invert this visible in refraction, but primary ray visible is turned. We see completely different result here. <laughs> I'm not drunk, I am caffeinated, guys. Sorry for this. And so, I'm gonna leave this like this. And you can actually play with those settings. With this every tool, like tweak and play like in playground. Like this, like this, and like this. Reflection, in this case, won't work. But if you have reflective object, reflective material, excuse me, that's gonna work. That's gonna work. Pay attention closely to this hinge. Eye helpers, whatever this part is, but I'm showing you guys. Pay attention. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. This cube, I accidentally deleted. Something I deleted, for sure. That's what I'm saying, guys. That how you should play with refractions. I mean, you should pay close attention into surroundings. My refractions will look differently. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, guys. So, in order, if if I would go and animate those glasses, I would go and put this cloner under the main null and rotate this main null, so it will inherit and save our reflections. That's it. That's how you, you're you gonna do the same reflections that I did on lenses. Second feature that you probably didn't know about, and there are actually several of them, I mentioned right now, UV projection, OSL, bump and normal. And you probably can overlook those settings while you work with your material. And let me explain what I'm talking about right now. This is actually pretty simple. Every beginner gonna understand this. I'm gonna use simple words, simple vocabulary in order to be 
understandable. So this is our cone. I added a roughness channel. It looks like this. I'm gonna actually go here. And every time I struggle with UV mapping, do not go into cone, materials, change projection here. Instead, I would go and add a node that, uh, as you might see, called UV projection. And the reason for this is I noticed when I work with cloth simulation, this projection type, it will stretch your texture, but animation, nope. That's why I came up with this UV mapping. I will set UV mapping, open, node editor, and add UV projection. I actually noticed that a lot of people overlook this setting this node i actually can change everything i have here but in more detailed version and let me quickly break everything step by step i can change from planner to cubic i, I just I, I use my scroll to scroll all options so this node allows us lazy people like me who, who hate UV editing make life a little bit simple, simpler. So I will leave projection type as planner. It gives us nice result. But we see kind of stretched texture here. I use my hands for explanation, but I'm gonna use my cursor instead. Oh, yeah, we see the stretched texture here. And what would I do instead? Change chord space to object, and we got another. We fixed last issue but got another this cone now stretches all along this side let me play with probably spherical we got pretty nice result though it got rid of this stretchness line and if you can deal with this you're probably good to go if you work with black and white texture just go and pick height field that's gonna be fine for you. In my case, tangent space normal, that works fine. Yes, height, height scale one, and just remember this result. And I actually gotta use UV projection and use it here and to roughness as well. I have no idea what's going on with this one. It got me actually thinking how to solve this problem and don't worry if I'm <laughs> caffeinated. I'm gonna save this to boost my energy. So this is our original. Dimensions is pretty good. It is pretty high, but still, it depends not only the texture, but uh, but the shape as well. So the way I fix this, you might already see in this. I add a triple nar. Uh, didn't change pretty much anything. Just uh, use blend. Try to play with this around, and I got smoother tiles. Then I noticed for some reason Bob map node accidentally deleted. This thing solved all problems. Turn on normal map. This is actually the second thing that uh, many artists overlook. There's not only bump map exists, but normal map as well. That will give us nice result. And I'm gonna go with scale normal one. That's what I'm saying, guys. If you have trouble with the bump map that you want to emphasize bumpy material, but you kind of get this uh, black result, I'm gonna choose normal map. But there are trade off that I'm going to talk about. Trade off here is that I am limited for editing. I cannot. Then I found that there is no trade out there. Like this? Oh, probably it will inherit. Nice, we can edit this. I get new insights every day. While recording, I got new insight out of my head, actually. Gives us nice and bright result. As you, as you can see, the difference between bump node, bump map, and normal map is huge difference. A huge difference. A lot of people actually don't know about this yet, <laughs> but this is so powerful tool. It is uh, that uses code. And the question is how to use this tool if I don't know how to code? There is an answer and there is no problem because Maxon released GitHub edition where they uh, added a lot of stuff as you can see. 
This is all pre-built uh, codes that you can use. And this is not just uh, a list, but put this uh, website in the description. So check this out. There's examples, a lot of them. So you can just uh, go here, copy, paste, and put this RSL node directly to your output to surface, output surface, and we'll get, you're gonna get this result. But in our case, I'm gonna show you guys how to work with, I so much love this uh, thing. It calls cal hex tile coordinates. Let me explain what it does, what it does. Copy it another thing. There you go. And we can see that uh, this code applied. We can see that uh, our name changed. And this is works, this node works like this. You have UV offset and you need to connect into general uh, general UV remap offset. Uh, let me see what it does. I'm gonna enable solo edit. And there's a bunch of settings. With the repetition, it will scale down our texture. Let me show you. Oh, the way around, actually. If I uh, increase this, it will scale down. You can see that there's kind of stretches our texture. And for blending, zero value, straight lines. And as I increase smooth tiling, like without noise. And if I increase this, that will kind of get imperfection, right? Random, this is another imperfection, but works the, the way around. It will rotate and gives us random, random tiling. So the funniest part is yesterday I recorded the video and I have no idea why it turned red. And now I just wanted to prove you that uh, I used the style coordinates into your project to get rid of tiles. And it's still broken. I uh, <laughs> broken. I don't know what's going on with Cinema 4D because unless my textures didn't load, I use this. I have no idea. This is practical project. I, I just have no idea why my textures uh, disappeared completely from my disk. Believe me or not, there's uh, there a huge library in uh, OSL to use it quickly. So I can arrange this by status and there's a huge list Cinema 4D couldn't find to use OSL and it is actually pretty useful. For every OSL node there's a quick explanation. You can see RS OSL black body but this is Gardenia actually. But you get an idea Besides that this is Godini, but you can see what is output and what's the connection. And this uh, breakdowns pretty much for every OSL node. This is how he connected Blur. This is how he or she connected this jitter color. color jitter. There's pretty much uh, a lot of uh, interesting OSLs that a lot of people overlock. And for the last tip, I'm going to show you guys how to animate your cameras into your personal projects. There's actually few options to animate your cameras. When you don't worry at all, you're just uh, animating on the go. And the second, when you work for kind of similar project, there's uh, rotation and two cameras uh, on one scene. And for this example, I would go and put my camera under the nose. And hierarchy here is really important. Pay close attention to your hierarchy. And if it's not work, play with nulls and see what works, what's not. In my opinion, in, it's a little bit math. You need to be a good problem solver. And to get this uh, camera changing into one scene, we need uh, to add stage. You can hit shift c and type stage or i believe it is somewhere here stage if it's not here oh under the sun icon stage so as you add stage there's uh, option on the object parameter camera and camera animation you uh, hit this uh, little icon 
change your camera, pick your camera by using this uh, eyedropper, by using this eyedropper, camera animation first, and go to like your desired uh, frame and change your camera and it will kind of, it will change exactly on this frame, you see? So that's it for today. If you found this video useful, hit this like button. If you have any question, drop it below. And with that being said, see you soon, guys.